everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well and you're having a lovely day in this video we are using the larger mandala tray mold that was sent to me by jd's art now if you saw my last video where i made these coasters using jesmonite this tray actually matches the coaster i'll link the video here if you missed it absolutely love them and I did say at the end of that video I would be making a bowl in tonight's video so yay I'm so excited I'm actually going to be using Vista resin which is their one-to-one -one. this is Vista one one-to-one -one. perfect for beginners now I have to be brutally honest with you guys I didn't press record at the beginning okay so I've already poured a thin layer of of resin into the mold and I'm so sorry for that I mixed up my resin I poured a thin layer I'm actually going for a technique that I've seen Petra Gerbrecht on YouTube she's doing this a lot and oh my gosh the results are incredible but I'm nowhere near as um, competent <laughs> as Petra so again thanks to Petra for this kind of technique where she puts resin into the mold first and then adds lots of different colours so we are sticking to the St Patrick's Day theme so lots of greens I pretty much just grabbed all of the greens I had we have a green from Resin Pro green um, powder from Let's Resin another green this says emerald green from Arteza but it's more of a turquoise if I'm honest and it's basically pouring everything into the center and allowing the resin to move its way out and do its thing I'm also going to be using resin pro gold kind of every three or four greens I'm going to be adding some gold so that's going to give it a nice little contrast so the first thing I did was mix up the rest of my resin and just separate it out into all of my little containers now Guys, these are actually food containers and I cannot lie, they are the easiest things to clean out. When you just need a small amount of resin, they're easier to clean out than silicon cups. Like, honestly, this stuff just cracks out the next day and yeah, could not recommend enough. You might have to have a few Indian takeaways <laughs> with poppadoms and get your onion salad to get these pots. But you know what? The sacrifice I actually make for you guys, <laughs> you know I'm kidding, right? Anyway... Well, I'm not. I mean, I, I had the pop-toms. Anyway, we are going to be dropping some resin directly as much as we can into the centre of the mould. Now, you all know I live in an old house. Nothing's level in this house. And yes, I could work on that. I could actually, you know, make my desk level and get myself a levelling board. So many of you have suggested now that I get a levelling board. Um, But I'm going to play with what I've got right now today. And I'm just pouring each and every colour into the centre of my mould, allowing that resin to work its way out now when Petra does this if you're watching Petra <laughs> I'm doing something wrong when Petra does this she gets the most incredible results like cells and it just looks absolutely stunning this is a close-up of what it looks like after I've finished pouring and at this point I thought do you know what <laughs> while we're here and because we can I'm gonna make some patterns into the resin with absolutely no idea whether this is gonna make any kind of impact whatsoever but again we do what we want don't we <laughs> so we're just having a play I'm using my cocktail stick now I'm not touching the bottom of the mold what you don't want to do is scratch your silicon in anyway because it will damage it permanently and then I figured you know while we're here we might as well carry on and just add in some leaf shapes again no idea if this is gonna actually make an impact in the final result but look at this oh my gosh why does resin not stay where you put it why does resin have to betray us like that and move all the time this is what it looks like a few hours later now here's the thing we are about to make a bowl in an ideal world, I would have got to this resin about two hours earlier than I did. Unfortunately, this is just on the cusp of being too late. It's too solid, you know? Luckily, I still made it work and we we're okay because it was a little bit pliable. But in an ideal world, you want to really make a little tester tray and just keep checking on it to see if it's ready yet. What you want is for it to be pliable enough to make into a bowl, but not runny enough for the resin to just run out of the mould once you demould it, if that makes any sense. As for all of the greens and the golds, I mean, 
I think it's gorgeous. I think it's got all of the greens in there. And you could just see the gold coming through. And I do think, if you look around the outside edge, I did get some of the cells that I see Petra getting in her results. But still, her results are, oh wow. Anyway, it's green. It's beautiful. Next, we need to make the bowl. This is the easiest way to make a bowl. Again, I've seen this on Petra's channel. She's out here inspiring me all the time. Get yourself a metal mixing bowl. Um, We have a set, so that was okay. And ideally, this form, this resin tray, this resin coaster or whatever it is you're making, it should be soft enough to just kind of fall in to the bowl this is what I mean you want it really bendy really pliable but not runny you don't want the resin to run out this is what was wrong with mine I left it just a little bit too long for it to be as moldable as I wanted it to be but do you know what I could have easily filmed another video and showed you you know how to do it perfectly perfect but that's not me I need to explain what went wrong here I left this resin for about eight hours I think I could have easily come back in six maybe because I had it on the heat mat probably a big mistake it cured it too fast and yeah we got there in the end lots and lots of bending and bending and moulding and bending for me to be able to shove it down into this bowl. Now I did use cling film here because obviously this is one of our bowls for our kitchen and I didn't want resin touching it, you know? Even though Vista resin has been classified as food safe, I'm always still a little bit wary about that. But then the kind of cling film started to rip so I ended up taking all the cling film out playing around pushing this resin tray down as much as I could like pure brute force was needed at this point um and then I ended up taking it back out reapplying the cling film and that is how it ended up so actually the next day I decided get it out of the bowl sit it upside down over a heat mat and hopefully that heat will make the bowl kind of curve even more and I just applied some weight to keep that bottom of the bowl flat the bottom is so beautiful honestly sometimes it's the front sometimes it's the back of the resin that is more pretty than the other sides I just think this is absolutely gorgeous and here is the bowl now at this point it's been three days you don't have to be that long this was just my schedule um it's rock solid at this point it's not going to bend again it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to distort its shape but how stunning is this now my dream was to get a bowl bowl like a proper bowl bowl this is more of a shallow bowl like a entryway tray for your door keys or you know a little decorative item in there but it's absolutely solid as a rock and I love it now there is temptation at this point there is temptation to add to it add gold pen I don't want to do any of that I think the mold speaks for itself with all these shiny areas it literally looks like disco lights flicking through the whole resin I think this mold is absolutely beautiful and like I said in the last video there's areas of matte textured and there's areas of pure shiny silicon and of course that comes through now because we can see all of that shiny area reflecting in the light and it's absolutely beautiful this would make a perfect bowl platter plate <laughs> it's not as bowly is that a word it's not as bowly as I wanted it to be but that is human error so keep an eye on your resin make sure that it is pliable enough to just fall down into your silverware don't let it go as long as I did we still have a bowl and the, the actual technique and the method is exactly as I've described. But sadly, mine didn't come out as bowly as I wanted. Now I just have a gorgeous shallow dish. And I'm okay with that because it's so beautiful. And the detail in the mould just really gets shown off in this. As for all of the green micas and the gold, I'm not 100% sure that all of that effort was worth it. The actual results of that pour... Mm. <laughs> if you guys have not watched Petra Gerbrecht, go and 
honestly check out her channel i'm gonna leave her linked below because everything in this video was fully inspired by her the way she made her bowls genius oh my gosh easiest method ever and of course the way she pours that resin to get some beautiful cells is just didn't work for me <laughs> it didn't work as well for me but you know what <laughs> she's amazing and i appreciate her very very much so i'm gonna link her channel down below if you want to really see what result I was actually going for with that resin pour. But it's all good. We are all here to learn. And I hope you found this helpful, despite the fact that we only have a shallow bowl and not a deep bowl. I am sorry if you can hear Puppy George barking. It is a crazy windy day here today. And every little noise is freaking him out. But he's downstairs with Tim. So he's good. He's safe. But yeah, he's a bit barky. Anyway, sorry for that. Hope you've enjoyed. And I will see you all in the next video. All of the details for JD's moulds will be down below in the description box. And do check out Petra's channel. I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Yesterday there was some